In this demo, we're going to use a listener for an observable object to do something similar to what we did way back in Chapter 14. In Chapter 14, we did show how to make a circle and an axe and various figures sort of follow around and change with changes in the window size. And we usually did that by using some kind of binding property. There may be a way we could implement this demo in the same fashion, but in this particular case we're not. We're using events in event-driven programming to do a similar job. Why don't we start by actually looking at what the demo does and then dissecting how it does it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the demo. Here it is. Basically you see a circle inside of a square of the same size, but as I resize the window, they both change accordingly similar to something we saw earlier where you take the smallest dimension of the window and use that to determine the size of the other two objects. So a tall skinny window, the width will determine how big the circle and square is, and a short fat window, the height will determine the uh, size of the circle and the square. So again, what we're doing here is something very similar to what you saw earlier. We did not use event-driven programming to do it but event-driven programming is one way that we can make this work. So let's talk about how we're doing it in this, in the context of this particular demo. So we have the usual stuff up at the top here um, and down at the bottom here. So let's look at the rest of the code. Well, we're going to make ourselves a pane and it's a stack pane. It's defined right here and it has the nice property that when we drop a circle and rectangle into that stack pane those figures will be centered right on top of each other and that's exactly what we want. We want the circle and rectangle to be the same size so that the circle exactly fits inside the rectangle. So if we make the initial radius for the circle 60 as we've done here and then we make the size of the rectangle 120 by 120, in other words a square initially, and we make the um, size of the pane that this is going to go into the scene way down here uh, 140 by 140 that'll leave a little bit of a gap or a border around uh, the square and circle as opposed to the size of the scene that we're dropping it into and again these are only the initial sizes because we're, as soon as we change the size of our window um, what we see in terms of the circle and square is going to change accordingly we make our circle gray and we make a rectangle white. Those are the fill colors. Stroke color is going to be black in both cases. We add to our pane, which you remember is a stack pane, as children, the rectangle and the circle. We drop our pane into an appropriately sized scene and then we're ready to go. Now here's where the event-driven programming comes in. This is our pane, our stack pane, that contains our two figures. When the window is resized, the pane has to be resized as well, which means its width property is going to change. If we add a listener to that observable value, um, and we're doing it using lambda notation, don't worry too much about the fact that you see an OV here. I guess it stands for observable, but it's just a, a dummy placeholder. We could put the E that you normally see here, and it would be fine as well. It really doesn't matter. Um, and, and we never even use it anyway, but you know that we could have used it inside of our code if we wanted to, right? Uh, so if it was an E, we could have said E dot something and checked some aspect of it, but we don't in this case. So it really is just a, a placeholder uh, for the lambda notation. But in any case, our code that's going to act when the uh, observable value changes is the resize code. And it happens both for a change in width property or, and or height property of our pane. So if either or both of those things change, we will execute our resize code. Now the resize code, as you see here, is going to, first of all, determine whether the window is higher than it is wide or wider than it is high. In other words, it's going to take the minimum of the width and height of the pane. And based on that, it's going to set the circle to an appropriately sized radius and the rectangle to an appropriate width and height. So that is 
how this works then. It's not the same approach we used earlier in chapter 14 because we weren't using event-driven programming then. We were simply binding values together. But the effect is still the same, except this time we're listening for an event and events are taking place and being acted on, and that is event-driven programming.